Life is very long. T.S. Eliot. I mean, he's given credit for it because he bothered to write it down. He wasn't the first to say it. Certainly not the first to think it, feel it. But he wrote the words on a piece of paper, he signed it, and a four-eyed prick was a genius. So, if you say it, you have to say his name after it. Life is very long, T.S. Eliot. Absolutely goddamn right. Especially in his case, since he lived to be 76 or something. A very long life, especially in those days. And he was only in his 30s when he wrote it, so he must have had some inside dope. Give the devil his due. Very few poets would have made it through his trial and come up on the other side brilliantined and double-breasted and Anglican. Not hard to imagine now, faced with his first wife, the lovely Viv, how Hart Crane or John Berryman might have reacted. Just foot-raced it to the nearest bridge, Olympian suicidalists. Not Elliot. Following sufficient years of ecclesiastical guilt, pop her in the nearest asylum and get on with the day. God Almighty, you, you have to admire the purity of the survivor's instinct. Berryman, the old goat, the world is gradually becoming a place where I do not care to be any more. I don't know what it says about me that I have a, a greater affinity with, with the damage. Probably nothing good. I admire the hell out of Eliot the poet, but the person I, I can't identify. Son of a bitch. Violet, my wife. She takes pills, sometimes a great many, and they affect, among other things, they, they affect her equilibrium. Fortunately, the pills she takes eliminate her need for equilibrium. So she falls when she rambles, but she doesn't ramble much. My wife takes pills and I drink. That, that's the bargain we've struck. One of the many bargains. Just one paragraph in our marriage contract. Cruel covenant. She takes pills and I drink. I don't drink because she takes pills. As to whether she takes pills because I drink, I learnt long ago not to speak for my wife. The reasons why we partake are any more inconsequential. The facts are, my wife takes pills and I drink. And these facts have, uh, over time, made burdensome, the maintenance of traditional American routine, the paying of bills, the purchasing of goods, the cleaning of, of clothes, and carpets and crappers. And rather than once more assume the mantle of guilt, vow absence with her fingers crossed in the, in the queasy hope of righting our ship, I've chosen to hand my life over to a higher power and join the ranks of the hiring class. It's, it's not a decision with which I'm entirely comfortable. I, I know how to launder my dirty undies. I've done it all my life, me or my wife. But I'm finding it's getting in the way of my drinking. Something has been said for sobriety, but very little. Berryman again. And now, you are here. The place isn't in such bad shape, not yet. I've done all right, I've managed. And just last night I, I burnt an awful lot of debris. You know, a, a simple utility bill can mean so much to a living person. But once they've passed, though, after they've passed, the, the words and numbers, they just seem like otherworldly symbols. 
It's only paper. Worse. Worse than blank paper. Oh, here. This is clean. Thank you. I apologise for the temperature in here. My wife is cold-blooded, not just in the metaphorical sense. She, she doesn't believe in air conditioning, as if it's a thing to be disbelieved. <laughs> My daddy was the same. I'm used to it. Oh. I, I knew Mr. Youngbird, you know. You knew daddy? Small town. I bought many a watermelon from his fruit stand. Some summers he sold fireworks too, right? Yes, sir. I bought Roman candles for my children. He did pass, didn't he? Yes, sir. May I ask how? He had a heart attack. Fell into a flatbed truck full of wine grapes. Wine grapes? In Oklahoma? I'm sorry. Thank you. May I ask about the name? Hmm? Well, he was Young Bird, and you are? Monevata. Monevata. I went back to the original language. Well, and does that mean Young Bird? Mm-hmm. And taking the name, that was your choice? Yes. Hmm. Cheers. Rev. By night within that ancient house, immense, black, damned, anonymous. Bev? Yes? Did you punish... What? Did you... What, dear? Oh, God damn it. Did you... Are the police here? No. Is this a window? Am I looking through a window? Can you come here? Oh, hello, hello. I didn't know you were entertaining. This is Jonna, the young woman I was telling you about. Oh, you tell me he's a woman. What? A woman. 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 Yes, dear, the, the young woman I'm hiring to watch the place. Huh? You're hiring women now, I think. I thought you meant the other woman. What other woman? Huh? I hope to hire her to cook and to clean and to take you to the clinic and to the... In the interest of civil action in your particular ways of speaking, I thought you meant you had bought a woman to be hired. I don't understand you. Hello. Hello. I'm sorry. Like this. Yes, ma'am. I'm Violet. What's your name? Jono. You're very pretty. Thank you. Are you an Indian? Yes, ma'am. What kind? Cheyenne. You think I'm pretty? Yes, ma'am. Like this? Like this? Now, careful. You're the house now. I'm sorry. I, uh, I, uh, I took some medicine for my mus muscular. Why don't you go back to bed, sweetheart? Why don't you go fuck a fucking sow's ass? 
All right. I'm sorry. I... I'll be sickly sweet. I am so sweet. In the lab, really. I think I mentioned on the phone that Dr. Burke recommended you. He feels you're qualified to handle the needs of, of our household. I've got a year towards my nursing certificate at Tulsa Community College, but I had to drop out when Daddy died, and I helped see Mom and Grandma through that time. Dr. Burke tells me you've been struggling for work. I've been cleaning houses and babysitting. He did tell you we we want to live in. Yes, sir. We we keep unusual hours here. Try not to differentiate between night and day. I, I doubt you'll be able to maintain any sort of healthy routine. I need the work. Well, the work itself, pretty mundane. I, I myself require very little personal attention. I thrive without it, in fact sort of a, a human cactus. M my wife has been diagnosed with a touch of cancer, so she'll need to be uh, driven to Tulsa for her final chemotherapy treatments. You're welcome to use the uh, American beer moth parked in the car park. You're welcome to use anything, everything, all this, this garbage we've acquired, our life's work. If you're going to live here, I want you to live here. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Please call me Beverly. Do you have any questions? What kind of cancer? I, I, I didn't mention it. Good God, I, I nearly neglected the punchline. Mouth cancer. What pills does she take? Valium, Visodin, Darwin, Darvacet. Percodan, Percocet, Xanax for fun, Oxycontin in a pinch, some black mollies once, just to make sure I was still paying attention, oh, and of course Delorded. I, I mustn't forget Delorded. Violet, my wife. My wife Violet doesn't believe she needs treatment for her habit. She's been down that road once before, came back clean as a whistle, and, and, and chose this reality for herself instead. You were about to ask why she isn't currently seeking treatment, weren't you? No, sir. Good. That relieves me. Now, Hold on a moment. My last refuge, my books, simple pleasures, like finding wild onions by the side of a road or, or requited love. T.S. Eliot. Read it or not, it's not a job requirement. This is just for your enjoyment. You are, you are free to read any of my books. Here we go round the prickly pear, prickly pear, prickly pear. Here we go round the prickly pear. <laughs> <laughs>